thank you for all who came. Hopefully you will learn what it takes to uh, deal with autoimmune disease from this lecture. This has been years of work that unfortunately ends up in a licensing problem because I receive a licensing fee from College Pharma Pharmacy from the, for this immunotherapy that I developed. So obviously you can't believe everything I say since I have a financial interest. But certainly I, I ask you to go on to my website. It's just drschrader.com with no C. And look uh, at some of the practitioners. And anything that you hear here, please call up some of these practitioners around the country who do use this treatment and uh, get their opinion. Because some of the things I'm going to tell you later on in the afternoon are fairly shocking. I wouldn't believe it if I were you. So I'd certainly call them and check up on me. <laughs> so this lecture is really not about LDA immunotherapy. It's, it's certainly part of the conclusion of the end of it uh, and something that we can do about autoimmune disease. Um, you know, I, one of the things that I complain about with these meetings is very often I hear didactic stuff that I can't do anything with when I get back to the office. Well, this lecture, if you understand it, which you all should because you're super intelligent just by the fact of being here shows you that way, um, you should be able to apply in your offices if you want to. And there's certainly extra stuff here that, that goes beyond what I'm going to talk about that may be worthwhile. So when you folks get home, I want you to all think about what I'm saying in this lecture. and think about the ramifications and perhaps what you could do with it because we need new ideas, we need everything that we can get in treating this awful problem, again, that I've looked for the, the cause and the treatment for ever since I've started practicing medicine. So there are several physicians around the country in Canada who use this treatment. Interestingly, no traditionally trained allergists use it. Um, what LDA is, is an extremely low dose, homeopathic range dose uh, substance, mixture of allergens for the treatment of allergy. Uh, the allergens that are used are things like pollens, dust, molds, and so forth. Uh, foods, certain chemicals, and we do have bacterial mixes now, thanks to Dr. McEwen, who developed it. Uh, it's made active by the uh, enzyme beta-glucuronidase, and, and many of you already know what LDA is. And, it's not the purpose of this talk to specifically talk about LDA, but the ramifications. So the way LDA works is by presenting with a tiny injection in the skin of the forearm, very precise, very low doses of substances, whatever you choose to inject, pretty much, along with beta-glucuronidase. Um, the beta acts as a lymphokine to present this substance, whatever you're injecting, to the dendritic cells in the skin that uh, obviously convey the message and produce uh, specific T regulator cells that are keyed into whatever it is you injected. So you're giving them a message, they're taking the message to the rest of the body and employing the message as needed. So what these T reg cells do is in address inappropriate reactions caused by CD4 helpers, cytotoxic uh, CD8s and B cells, and that's a generalization, but it's sort of the, the idea of what regulator cells do. Um, so with LDA, you're always immunizing and creating a growing population of these T cells that have a half-life of between 40 and 80 days. Uh, so obviously, many T reg cells will live for many years. And that's the idea with LDA. The treatment starts out every two months. It's given every two months for six or eight times, and then it's extended to every three months, four months, six months, once a year, wherever you can go with it. Uh, these are some of the conditions that are tre uh, treated with traditional LDA. LDA was developed primarily to treat allergy, and certainly that's what we're using it for these days. But we're also using it for another list of autoimmune problems that I'll get to in this talk. So it treats the various things on this list. It also treats anaphylaxis, which is very exciting. So you can take a kid with a fatal peanut allergy and, or an adult with shrimp allergy, a classic IgE-mediated allergy, and you can make it so that if they're exposed to those foods, they won't die, which is critically important. Uh, 
lately we're treating eosinophilic esophagitis, which has probably been around forever. It's not anything new. It's just that they're biopsying it and noticing these days, noticing it these days. But it's an allergic reaction primarily to ingested substances. So the list is a lot longer, and today we're going to talk about the autoimmune disease part of this list. Um, before I talk about further stuff, I want to mention uh, Len McEwen. Len's a brilliant clinical allergist in the UK who developed this in the 60s and 70s. Uh, many of us who do this are fortunate enough to know Len. He's still alive and kicking. Uh, he's probably the most brilliant clinical allergist that I know. He did this based on a, a Czech, Czechoslovakian ENT uh, doctor that he was working with. Uh, and the ENT doctor's idea was to inject nasal polyps with hyaluronidase. He thought the hyaluronidase would dissolve the polyps uh, because the polyps are principally hyaline with other components. It turns out it didn't do anything to the polyps. It didn't shrink the polyps per se, but it cured the patient's allergies for a season or two. So um, Dr. McEwen was working with him at the time, went on to elucidate the active component of the hyaluronidase, which is beta-glucuronidase, and has written several papers. Uh, for those of you who have the syllabus at hand, I, wasn't, I didn't have my computer here. And uh, like Michael, I'm not sure whether my Word file got in. It did. Oh, excellent. So uh, that was sort of an afterthought, but it's got several hundred references on what I'm going to be talking about today. So this is Len's landmark paper uh, that was published in the British Medical Journal um, <clears throat> back in 67.